Here's the thing, medical school is a process, a roller coaster ride full of twists and turns, ups and downs. And now, being a fifth year medical student, when I look back upon this journey, I realize that there have been so many things that I would do differently only if I had known better. So let me take you through 10 things I would change only if I could start MBBS or medical school all over again. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. Now, the number one thing I would change about my past is that I was a freaking robot the first two years of medical school. And that's because I had a very rigid and fixed routine during these first two years. I would get up in the morning, head to the lectures, attend all the freaking lectures, get done, let's say by lunchtime, have lunch with my friends, and then sit at the library for some self-studying for the, let's say the next three, four hours, and then hit the gym, go back home, eat, sleep, and freaking repeat. Life felt mechanical. Even though I was getting good grades, I was not falling behind on any lectures, not missing anything, I was still not happy with my situation. I was not feeling good because I had made MBBS my life instead of making MBBS a part of my life. And there's a huge difference. And the trick that I have now realized is that being less rigid and more flexible is the way to go. I mean, realizing that falling behind on lectures is completely fine, is completely okay. There is nothing wrong with that. Because the problem with falling behind on lectures is that it gives us guilt, you know, and guilt can easily lead to panic. That, oh my God, I have fallen behind on so many lectures. I have so much to catch up on. I'm going to fail my exams. No, relax. Take a deep breath and relax. Trust me, everybody has to go through that because the first two years of medical school, I was freaking rigid. I was a robot. And then sooner or later, I realized that this is not how I want to live my life. And look at me now. I do not attend any lectures at all. And falling behind is something that happens to me every single week. Because the problem is not that you have so much work to catch up on. The problem is that you don't have a system devised that will help you catch up on those lectures. And lectures remind me of my next point, which is that lectures lectures are a waste of time. And now before you freak out completely that, whoa, 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 this guy is talking nonsense, let's report him to the police. Please, please relax. Take a deep breath. Relax. I think we can all agree on the fact that lectures are mostly passive, unless you have that one special professor who knows how to make things interesting. And passive learning is just not the way to go, you know, because you're just sitting there and listening to the professor talk for like for 45 minutes nonstop and trying to absorb all the information. Because trust me, like if you have five, six lectures a day, how much information do you actually remember from those five lectures at the end of the day? For me, it's close to zero. And secondly, lectures are also inefficient because they consume double the amount of time. Because firstly, you have to go to a lecture, let's say about cardiac physiology, and then you have to go back to the library and study the exact same topic by yourself as well. You are doing the exact same thing twice. Now, if you cut out on lectures and just self-study or use like YouTube or any other resources, you know, you can do the exact same topic in half the time. And I actually made a whole calculation that helped me figure out how many hours I have saved by not attending lectures. And the amount of hours I saved corresponds to five whole days per semester. Now combine these five days with a weekend and you get one week's vacation in medical school per semester just by not attending lectures. That is sick. And the link to the video where I break down why lectures are a waste of time will be somewhere up here. Now, now let's get back to the third point, which is that grades do not matter in MBBS. Now medical students are high achievers from college. We are super nerds. We have to admit that. Um, and anything less than high grades or less than an A is just just not acceptable. And I beg you, please do not go to medical school with this mentality. Let me share my personal story. So I've always been a high achiever in school and I had my identity completely linked to my grades. So I was the one who got top grades in class. So when I started medical school, I had the same mentality that in order to be myself, I need to get the best grades. I need to get an A on every single exam. And that's exactly what happened during the first two years. I was studying, let's say, freaking hard for anatomy. And guess what happened? I got an A in anatomy and I even got a job as an assistant teacher in anatomy at the medical faculty at my university. That is when I realized about this thing called hedonic adaptation that, you know, that A felt amazing, very, very good for a few minutes. And then after that, my level of happiness just went straight down to the baseline level where it was before getting that A. And that made me realize what the heck am I doing? I mean, patients do not care. Even other senior doctors do not care. I mean, nobody has asked me up till now, hey, Arham, what did you get in 
anatomy exam. Nobody, literally nobody. My point being that try to organize studying around your life instead of organizing your life around studying. And that's because other things in life matter as well and we need to accept that as medical students. I mean, I would rather have a C than an A and also have time to make these YouTube videos, start reading books, making TikToks, having time with my family, with my friends, gym, and you know, all that other cool stuff. I firmly believe that you need top grades to get into medical school, but once you are in medical school, all you need is average. That's it, be happy with that. The fourth thing I would change is to document more. And trust me, even though MBBS sounds like a lot, five or six years of medical school, it's a long, long time, but trust me, time flies, I promise you that. And that's why you have to try and document as much as possible, because then you have something to look back upon in 10 years time when you are a consultant. And I'm not saying that everybody has to become an influencer or a YouTuber, no, that's not the point. Just try and document as much as possible for your own memories. I mean, let's say, take pictures or talk to the camera the night before your exam, and save that in your phone as a separate folder. Documenting more is the closest thing possible to time traveling. You can literally go back and relive the exact moment as it was if you have documented more. And I really wish I had done more of that before starting my channel. The fifth thing I would change is using the exact same old conventional study techniques which have proven to be inefficient according to tons and tons of research. Studies have shown that note taking is passive, highlighting is passive, rereading is passive, and these passive forms of learning are not the most optimal, optimal way of absorbing information. Instead, you should try and utilize active learning as much as possible. And what exactly is active learning? Active learning is anything that involves testing yourself like quizzing, flashcards, refinement technique, etc, etc. The point being that you should try and test yourself as much as possible with increasing intervals. And if you want to know more about, let's say, active learning or active recall and space repetition, then you can watch either my videos or or any others of those, you know, study YouTubers like Ali Abdal, Karma Medic, etc. Because I was a huge fan of note taking, man. The first two years of MBBS, I would take all these extensive notes and then, you know, color code them and, you know, reread them and all that stuff. And then the third year, I finally stopped doing that and I have never looked back since then. The next thing I would go back and change is my exam mentality because exams, trust me guys, they are supposed to be fun. They're not supposed to be scary. And the reason why I say this is because this is directly linked to my, to my previous point about active learning where you consistently test yourself. So let's say you have been doing active learning and consistently testing yourself, then exams are just another way of also testing yourself, right? Because now you're used to testing yourself, quizzing yourself all the freaking time. So the exams don't really feel anything different. You know, it's the same thing. You just have questions and you answer those questions. It's exams, exact same principle. So exams seem much more fun when you also involve active learning. We also need to understand this principle in stoicism, the dichotomy of control. Rules. So let's say the question is, have I studied enough for my exams? If the answer is yes, then why worry? You have done everything that was in your hands, in your control, you have done your best, that's it, don't worry. If the question is, I have not studied enough for my exams, then ask yourself this, okay, can anything be done now? If yes, then do it, because that is in your control. If no, nothing can be done now, then why worry? Because nothing can happen anyway. The, what has happened has happened, and you can't really change it anyway, so why worry? The next thing I would go back and tell myself is that it's okay to fail an exam. Trust me guys, I failed the easiest exam in medical school and that was back in my second year and this was the single best thing that ever happened to me because I had never failed an exam before in my entire freaking life and this one failure completely changed me as a person and made me the person that I am today and I will do a full story time sometime soon and explain what exactly happened but that's not the topic for today the point being that failure is not the end of the world I mean all you have to do is go and take a retake you pass your retake and boom you go on you move on that's it that's the worst thing that could happen it is not a big deal we have to start normalizing retakes the next thing I would avoid is trying to be the best and competing with my fellow students now as mentioned before we as MBBS students are used to getting high grades we are used to being the best in our class and that's the exact same mentality we have in medical school as well we want to be the best we want to be the smartest one in our class trust me guys that is completely 
complete BS. It's not a fish market, guys. It's not like if person A gets an A, then I won't get to be a doctor. No, we both will be doctors at the end of the day and we will be working as colleagues and, you know, working together. So please share notes, help each other and build each other up instead of, you know, having that unhealthy competition between, you know, MBBS students. The ninth thing that I would change is that I would find a mentor or a senior which has been through the exact same experiences, the exact same exams or has maybe notes on the exact same topics that you are about to study. And this is very important because every university has their own, you know, system. They have their own exams. They have their own way of teaching. They have their own like books and all that stuff. The point being that if you have that one senior at your particular university, then they can share the exact same experiences and tell you how the exams were, what kind of questions come on that particular exam in your specific university and all that cool stuff, right? So find yourself a mentor, a senior who can help you with all that stuff. Last but not the least, the one thing I would change if I could go back is that I would always take initiative into saying hi and, you know, greeting new people because, you know, you have to make new friends. You have to enjoy MBBS medical school because, you know, everybody is nervous, right? Nobody wants to go up to be the person um, who goes up and says, hello, hey, my name is Urham. Can I be your friend, right? Nobody wants to do that. Everybody is nervous, especially in the first days of MBBS. So if I could go back, then I would tell myself to be that one confident person who would go and say hello and make new friends, make good connections, make a good network around yourself and you basically have a good time in medical school. That's a wrap for today, Sapiens. Now here is a link to another video which will surely add some value to your lives. And before leaving, kiss that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.